Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering hypermagnesemia. Now, it's important for you guys to know the therapeutic range, and the therapeutic range is 1.5 to 2.5. So anything higher than 2.5 is hyper magnesemia. Okay, uh, before we get started, guys, as always, I'm going to ask you, please like this video. Do it now so you don't forget. You know you're going to love the video. Like it now. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Please help support me and support my channel by sharing my content. Share it with a friend, a coworker, a colleague, a classmate, even a nursing instructor. Don't forget I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Let's get started. Oh, by the way, I get lots of questions every time about this book. This is a wonderful book. Um, I encourage you to get it if you're struggling with med surge and the book that you're using just is not doing it for you. This book is Medical Surgical Nursing by Lewis, ninth edition. Um, it's an older book. I, I think they're up to 11th or 12th edition by now, but the one I'm using is an older edition, is ninth, ninth edition, okay? So hypermagnesemia. Too much magnesium, higher than 2.5. It's high serum magnesium, and it usually occurs, look at this word, only. Remember I told you when you're studying and there are certain keywords that you see, only is one of them? Pay attention. That means, what's another word for only? Just this, right? It's very important. Only with increased magnesium intake accompanied by renal insufficiency or failure. So the... Usually the only way a patient will get hypermagnesemia is if they're getting too much magnesium, they're ingesting it, they're getting it in their body too much, and the kidneys aren't working. Because remember, the kidneys are responsible for excretion. So if you're ingesting it or you're getting too much magne magnesium, your kidneys should be functioning enough that you're able to get it out of your body. You're able to excrete it via kidneys. But if you're getting too much and the kidneys aren't working, this is what you're going to be dealing with, hypermagnesemia. Let's keep going. A patient with chronic kidney disease who ingests products containing magnesium, and they gave you examples. You need to know those examples. They have been seen on NCLEX many times. What are those examples? Malox, milk of magnesia. These are high in magnesium. They will have a problem with excess magnesium. That makes sense. Patients got chronic kidney disease. Kidney hasn't been working the way it's supposed to be working for a very long time. On top of that, they're ingesting products that are high in magnesium. It makes sense. Magnesium excess uh, could develop in pregnant women receiving magnesium sulfate for the treatment of eclampsia. Now, if you haven't done labor and delivery yet, or you haven't gotten to maternity, you'll know that one of the treatments for eclampsia is magnesium. Why? Something you guys have to understand about magnesium, it relaxes those muscles. Magnesium relaxes the muscles and nerves. So that woman, who has eclampsia, they want to make sure that they relax those muscles, right? They don't want her to go into seizures, um, helps prevent lots of issues. So something about magnesium, it relaxes the muscles and nerves. You have to know that. Okay, so where were we? So it can happen to women who are taking magnesium sulfate for the treatment of eclampsia or in patients that are taking laxatives and as acids that contain magnesium. So we have to be very careful with that. Look at what magnesium does. It impairs nerve and muscle function. Whenever you think of magnesium, I want you to think of relaxing of the nerve and muscle function. At first, the initial manifestations include hypotension, facial flushing, lethargy, urinary retention. They're holding on to all that urine in the bladder because remember, it's the muscles of the bladder that squeezes that urine out, right? But because of hypermagnesemia, they have muscle and nerve what? Relaxation, urinary retention, nausea, vomiting. As the serum magnesium increases, deep tendon reflexes are lost they won't have them anymore because of that muscle and nerve relaxation. Followed by, look at this, muscle paralysis, coma, respiratory and cardiac arrest can occur because the last time I checked, it was the respiratory muscles that helped the lungs to expand so you can breathe. And last time I checked, the heart's a big what? Muscle. So it can cause muscle relaxation to the point that that heart just stops. So management, it begins with avoiding magnesium containing drugs. And we already have those examples. Remember the Maalox, milk of magnesium, 
um, laxatives that contain uh, antacids. You're going to teach a patient to limit the diet intake of magnesium containing foods. Let me tell you something. Whenever you guys have an example, you're studying and they give you example, make sure you know those examples. Usually those examples show up on your nursing exams as select all that applies. Hint, hint. All right. So what are those examples? Green vegetables, nuts, bananas, oranges, peanut butter, chocolate, they are high in magnesium. So that patient with hypermagnesemia, you have to tell them to stay away from those types of foods. Now, if the kidney's working properly, the kidney function is good, you're going to increase fluids and diuretics to promote urinary excretion to help get rid of that excess magne magnesium. Okay. But remember, you're only going to push fluids and give them diuretics if the kidneys can handle it, if the kidneys are functioning properly. If the patient with impaired renal, excuse me, the patient with impaired renal uh, function, we're going to do dialysis. That's how we're going to get rid of um, all of the ma magnesium, because if their kidneys aren't functioning properly, we, number one, we can't force fluids. We're going to mess around and give that patient fluid overload because they're not going to get rid of the fluid because the kidney's not working. And number two, we're not going to give them diuretics because those diuretics are dependent on the kidneys actually functioning. So if the kidney is not functioning, instead of giving them fluids and diuretics, we expect what? Dialysis. If hypermagnesemia is symptomatic, that means the patient has hypermagnesemia and we're seeing those symptoms that we went over, such as the, you know, the decreased uh, tendon reflexes or even the muscle paralysis, things like that. If they're symptomatic, giving IV calcium gluconate, that will help. It will oppose the effects of the excess mag magnesium on the cardiac muscle. So this is another treatment option if that patient is symptomatic. We expect for calcium gluconate to be ordered for that patient for hypermagnesemia. Now, one more thing. Let's go over this table. The ones I put the star next to, those are the ones that tend to show up more on nursing exams. So guys, I don't write your test. So don't go in the comment section and say, Professor D, this was not on it or whatever. I don't write your exams, but I'm just telling you there's a pattern, okay? And the ones I put a star next to are the ones that tend to show up more on nursing exams. Make sure you know them. So for hypermagnesemia, let's look at the causes. Renal failure, number one, the kidneys can't get rid of all that magnesium. What else? Um, IV administration of magnesium. Remember, IV goes straight into the bloodstream. You don't have to worry about it being um, metabolized or processed and going through, you know, the GI tract, going through the liver. It goes directly into the bloodstream. So, of course, that could cause hypermagnesemia. And look at this, antacids or laxatives that contain a magnesium, right? Manifestations. Remember, I want you to think of muscle and nerve relaxation. So lethargy, drowsiness, muscle weakness, urinary retention, diminished or absent deep tendon reflexes, decreased pulse, decreased blood pressure. Everything goes down. All right, guys, that's your hypermagnesemia in a nutshell. It's not as hard as we all thought it was. So make sure you guys know this information so you can ace your next exam. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Please let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me cover that I have not done so already. Very soon, I think I have the date for my next NCLEX uh, live that I'm going to do on YouTube, but I have to have just two more things I need to check on to confirm. But I will be making that announcement either today or tomorrow on my next and Clex review live. It's free, guys. It's just something I'm doing to help you guys out. So I hope you can make it. I'll be giving the date for that shortly. Thank you so much for watching my video, and you guys will catch me on the next video.